Welcome back, guys. This is video six in this series. It's been going amazing, Joe. Really, really enjoying this. So much fun. Love learning about how to flip land. Guys, hope you're enjoying this. Please leave a comment and let us know if you are, what you're learning, what things you want to know more about. Uh, maybe, Joe, we can do some follow-up videos after this series over time and keep building on this library. This video is going to be very important because we're going to be, we're going to be talking about now how to analyze the deal, right? So we've talked about choosing your market, where to find the buyers, how to find the sellers. And now let's say you've, and we talked about scripts and how to talk to sellers. So when you find a seller that wants to sell that land, how do you know what's a good number so that you can get a contract and flip it for a profit? Yeah. So, you know, really important topic because you, you wanna get this right. You know, you can always go back and renegotiate if you do get it wrong, uh, but no one likes to do that. And you don't wanna build a reputation as someone who constantly is renegotiating or canceling contracts. So getting good at the analysis is where this is at. And, and really it's all about buying right. You know, when you buy right, that's where you make all your money yeah. because you're gonna build in margin to then be able to easily flip that deal. Yeah. So how do we get to that number? What's the maximum allowable offer or our formula to look at a land deal, come up with a price that we know we can get and then flip for a profit? Yeah. It's, it's really that easy. It's not that hard. Yeah. Um, sometimes people get a little locked up and nervous because they're afraid they're gonna make a mistake which is why I have three months in my contract, right? Um, which you can get at the, in the link in the description to get my contracts right in there. By the way, guys, remember there's a, there's a toolkit that Joe's put together. It's got all these resources, including his contract for land deals. Now, you might have a purchase and sale agreement. I give mine away for free. Those tend to typically be very house related, mm -hmm. so it's gonna talk about things that are kind of more about a house. Yeah. Whereas you have your own custom contract with sellers yeah. that is for land deals. Yeah. And so it, really cool. And, and again, you mentioned this just now, I just want to reiterate this. We've been saying it throughout the series here, but in your typical contracts, you have a 90 day close, yeah. which is so awesome because you have all the time in the world to find your buyer and flip your deal. Right. Well, because with land, it's a harder to get comps. You know, you can't yeah. just go in because there's usually tons of houses for sale, even in small markets that have sold, you know, land is a little different. Um, it's much, sometimes it's more of an art than it is a science. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just don't know. You just can't get good comps and so you gotta come up with the best number you can. Not only that, but when you're talking to sellers, how do you pitch a 90 day close? And it's really easy. Like what I'll often say to sellers is I'll say, look, um, I've gotta do some due diligence. You know, we're not real sure yet what we're gonna do with this property, but I might need to call the city. I might need to look at some zoning. I might need to make sure, yeah. you know, I might need, I gotta do some things to really you know, and that's gonna take me a minute, and they get that. Because well, it's just a piece of dirt, so they like, know you've gotta figure some things out. Here's the crazy thing, though, with land. It's very rare for a seller to object to my 90 days. Very it's rare. Very rare. I just give them the offer, they sign it. Because with, with house, with land, you, it's not like you have to close quickly. Can you imagine trying to get 90 day closes on houses? People no. do it, but it's that's not easy. I mean, that's rare. So, yeah, it's... <laughs> So sometimes they'll say, hey, can we close faster? And if it's a good deal. But I, because sometimes it's hard to come up with an offer, sometimes I have to just take my best guess and I won't know if it's a good offer until I put it on the market. Doesn't matter what I think it's worth. Doesn't matter what the realtor thinks it's worth. What matters is what the buyers thinks it's mm -hmm. worth. So if I'll get feedback from the buyers. Um, you know, if I'm getting a lot of calls, that's a good sign. If it's been three, four weeks, I've not gotten any calls yet, then I'm going to get back on the phone with the seller and maybe... You know, get ask for more time or get a price reduction or maybe mm -hmm. turn that contract into an option contract. Now, with your offer, since we're talking about this real quickly, um, you got the 90-day close. What's your due diligence period look like, typically? I don't have a due diligence period. Okay. It's, it's three months. So it's the length of the contract. Right. I don't yeah, have any okay. kind of inspection contingency or anything like that. But you have the option to still basically terminate the contract. Yeah if you need to for some reason. it's Yeah, it's kind of crazy how my contract yeah. is one-sided like that, mm -hmm. um, but it does say on there I can cancel it for any reason. Okay. And um, now, it goes without saying, the right thing to do is don't drag the seller on for three months only to see, you know, yeah. and then not close on it. So There's I know there, within there, a month. I think with land, so I talk about this a lot with houses being very careful about one-sided contracts because yeah. when those go to litigation, and you're an investor and you have you know all your way, none their way, 
those that's not going to look good. You know, like you're going to lose that argument yeah. with with like a court, a judge, or in front of a court. But with land, there's there's really no inherent value going on. It's not like someone's packing a U-Haul. Yes. There's no real. You're not really harming a seller exactly. like you would with a house, yeah. and they packed up right or whatever. It's a huge, big difference. That's really important to understand. Um, Takes the stress out of it. Yes. There's not this. There's not this urgency so much with land. Yeah. Makes it way easier. Yeah. So anyway, okay. So I got a list here. I'm going to share my screen if that's all right again. Perfect. And uh, we went into PropWire, and I did a search for Lee County, and I pulled up land, and I went into advanced fil filters here, and I said, show me all of the out-of-state owners that have owned for over 10 years where well, they've been delinquent in their taxes in the last three years. That's it. Mm -hmm. Save and close, and 9,600 property records here which is crazy right and just in one county uh, this is near fort myers lee okay. county all right and uh let's say we pull up this property the seller calls us they get our they get our postcard they call and leave a voicemail and um they want to sell their property and now i've talked to them a little bit maybe or maybe not sometimes i go right from voicemail to send them an offer and let's look to see what kind of offer would we make on this property so one of the first things i like to do is I'll do some research here. You can do some comps here. Um, if you go into comps and you can kind of see a bunch of really solid comps here. Um, but one thing- And the map up there kind of shows you where they're at yeah. in relation to- So this yeah. is sold in the last year within a half mile and land. And we we added a draw feature. So if you wanted oh, to, yeah. you know, pick, cause right now it's just kind of doing mm -hmm. a radius. So if you wanted to, yeah, you could go mm -hmm. zoom out farther. You can do a mile radius, um, but you get, plenty of data here, you know? Mm -hmm. But one of the things I like looking at on Redfin is now I can look at active comps and sold comps. Mm. So I'll go to Redfin here, I'll put in the address of that property, pull it up, and this is a really cool tool that I use a lot. Um, I click on the map right here, the little thumbnail thing, and then I click on this button, Nearby Homes for Sale, and what it does is it puts that property right in the center of this map. So when I zoom in and zoom out, it, show, it keeps that property in the center of the map. And I want to go here to land. Sometimes you got to click this twice. Looks like it's behaving good. I know it is uh, 10,716 feet, so square feet of 10,716 divided by 43,560. So it's 0 0.24, 0 0.25 acres. Five, yeah. It's about quarter of an acre, right? So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do a parameter Mm -hmm. I want between like 9,500 square feet and I might, I'm going to do half an acre, mm -hmm. okay? And I got 15 properties there, which is a lot. Now, let's say I want more. I can zoom out. Now I have 21. Well, that's plenty of data. Yeah, it is. Right? Like, yeah. you don't need more data than that to get an idea yeah. of what's going on. And again, so when guys, I zoom, What he's doing is he's comping, right? You're, yeah. you're trying to find like lots similar yeah. lots to the one you're looking at yep so i like to sort from low to high so these are actives now right because i'm looking at this thinking the first thing i'm always thinking is all right if i'm going to sell my lot what am i going to need to price it mm -hmm. for to sell it quickly i'm obviously going to be and, need to be less than 22.9 and you do not want to compete with the 21 homes on the market no so if a buyer's like you know what i want to buy a lot in this area which one should I buy? You don't want to be competing with 21 lots. No. You'll sit. Yeah. And this right. is why I like to look at it on Redfin. So what you're doing is you're using actives to determine yes. where should I, where do I need to be so that I get a quick sale, meaning I got to be below the average active. Mm -hmm. And now from there, I can back into my offer price. That's what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. You guys following that? Really cool. So actually, I zoomed out a little bit and moved and I, this thing just popped up here. Um, so they're asking for seventeen nine. So I'm thinking again. How many days on market on that one? Um, because that matters too. Sure, one hundred eighty four days. So it's not moving at seventeen nine. Mm -hmm. So a lot of a mistake a lot of investors make is they're linking. Um, they look at maybe averages and they come up with an offer mm. based on sold comps and they ignore active comps mm. or. Um, they're not looking at enough because this is my competition. So I'm just thinking right now immediately, if I'm going to sell my property, I'm going to need to be at about 16000 bucks, Maybe fifteen, something like Maybe fifteen, that. right? I'm always going to be aggressive and conservative here. And so if I want to make a minimum of $10,000 profit, 
Put you, know, you at five. I'm going to put you. I'm, bam! There's my offer. I'm going to make five grand. That's. I mean, Joe, we're not. We're. I mean, we're comping. Yeah. But what we're not doing is we're not. I mean, lots are lots, and you put in some parameters. We're not looking at bedrooms and baths no. and basements and garages. Year built. We're not looking at year built. We're, we've eliminated so much of a comping process and no repairs. We're not looking at repairs. Yeah. yeah. So this is why my teenagers, my kids are smart, right? Yeah. This is why my teenage boys can do this. I'm well, just telling them, look at the data here. What do you think you could sell it for? Yeah, you know. Now... When you're selling with seller financing, you may be able to push that number up a little bit. You might be able to sell it for twenty grand with owner financing. And you did low to high, so seventeen yeah. nine would be the lowest price. But it looks like you're seeing twenty two nine, twenty two nine, twenty three. So, like, if you cut, if you price this at fifteen or sixteen, you would be the cheapest house mm -hmm. of lots in that parameter yeah. in that whole market for sale. And I'm going to sell it quick. I so know you're going right? to sell. You're going to move that quick. Now let's look at solds. This is why I like Redfin, because you can switch really quickly between them, and you can look for the last. Now, look at this. Look at all that activity. All, see all those blues? In the last three months? Go to six. It's going to double. Six months? I mean, this is a very active land market. Yeah. So one of the things I like to tell realtors, this is important. Everybody understands this. Whatever your tool is, PropWire, Redfin, Zillow, you need to get really, really comfortable with it. Because when you're on the phone with the seller and with the realtor, you can quickly find the property, oh, yeah. click on that thing, that little thumbnail map, and then click nearby and then zoom in and out and you can see active and sold comps. And you can tell Mr. Agent, you know, I see they're asking 20 grand, but I'm looking at sold comps here. And in the last three months, this property two blocks away is sold for 11250 Yeah, Joe, I'll get, I've gotten so good at this from just doing it so much mm -hmm. that... I'll literally spend five minutes, then I'll pick up the phone, and I'll be able to have a very high-level yes. conversation, talk about actual comps I'm looking yep. at, and question, hey, are, did you see this one? You did. You mm -hmm. said this earlier. Did you see this comp? Did you see this comp? Did you see this comp? And how do they dispute when you're bringing like real data to them? Yeah. And it just helps justify your price. Exactly. So... So we've seen some, we're seeing some low solds here. Now, if I just switch to for sales, like I'm constantly going back and forth thinking, all right, man, shoot. Well, I'm going to have to list mine probably for 17, 16, 17 grand. So real quick, I can calculate, just subtract 10 from that. Mm -hmm. um, now that that's $10,000 gross profit. I might have to pay a little bit for realtors, a little bit for closing costs, mm -hmm. borrowing private money or whatnot. But that's going to get me ballpark. I know I need to be at about five grand mm -hmm. on this deal, right? Um, so that's one of the things I like to do is just switch between for sale and solds. Sometimes I go six months. Sometimes if I want more cheaper comps, I look at a year. Yeah. Now Because of the market we're in right now. Yeah. Well, now I got a $9,000 yeah. vacant lot. Now, you see how there's no picture? That means it came from county records. Gotcha. Yeah. So a lot of these comps, when you look at them, you know if there's a picture like that, it's from the MLS. There'll if be a write-up no, probably too, right? Yeah. If there's no picture... Then it's from county records. But here's the cool thing. Guess now, that if I got a property under contract, guess who I'm calling? I'm going into these solds. These are your buyers. And I'm calling the realtors. Mm -hmm. The listing agent here and the bought with agent here. Because mm -hmm. they know who the buyers are. Maybe this guy. Both those are good leads. Oh, yeah. Because one listed for a landowner and one bought for a mm -hmm. land buyer. Mm -hmm. Both those are great leads. So I'm going to call them up. Yeah. And I can go into prop wire. I can see who actually did buy the property mm -hmm. and I can call them. Now, you put in the, in the parameters um, max half an acre, but I'm looking at these quarter acre, quarter acre, quarter acre. So let's say you do find a good one, but it says it's a half acre. You might want to consider that when you're valuing it, right? Because yours, yeah. is, it's twice the size. Well, so I do, I have this little tool and I'll show you now here kind of so what I'm far, doing. They're all quarters though. Yeah. In, in this part of Florida, they're all They're the all going to be the same. Yeah. When you're in North Carolina, when you're in Georgia, Tennessee. Oh, my gosh. It could so be five acres or half an acre or right. anything. Yeah. I wasn't going to pick a difficult county to comp, okay? <laughs> I picked a county that I knew would be easy to comp. Yeah. But the thing I love about this part of Florida is look at all of these solds in the last year. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. You think if I get a property here, I'll be able to sell it quick? And here's the other cool thing. If I scroll, there are still properties here that are selling for 17 grand, 18 grand. Keep on scrolling some more. 20 grand. If I go to page two, 20, 20, 21. Now I'm just curious, put it on table and does it tell us our, um, 
that will tell us our days on market? Not from okay. this, no. Yeah. It's different than houses. Yeah. But what you could do is you could download, click on this, and it'll download that whole table into a spreadsheet. And the, from that spreadsheet, you can, you can kind manipulate, of manipulate things, it yeah. and play with it. And I do that a lot. Sometimes the other thing I do is, if I'm getting too many comps, I will say, all right, well, give me all of the ones that sold for under 40 grand. Yeah. Right? So kind of narrow it down a little mm -hmm. bit. And then I might zoom in, zoom out to get more comps. If I have too many, I'll zoom in. Now I have 30 comps. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of play with this to get what I'm at now. And be sure also that when you're looking at land, you're also understanding um, what's where that lot is location. Because it, in Florida, you have a lot of these canals oh, yeah. and waterfronts. And you cannot comp a, a, a waterfront. Yeah. Like look up there, all the canals. Mm -hmm. So if I had a property up there... And and way you, different story. And you notice I did up to 40. Yeah. So there's so nothing up here. Yeah, look at the line. Yes. Yeah. But that's all right. You know, now if you see your property you're looking at, it has backs to water like mm -hmm. that. Um, then you, you kind of have to be a little more, you know, looking at each individual one. But yeah. um, so what I do now sometimes is, um, is, is I will go in. The easiest way to do this, again, is just to look at, well, what could I, what would I have to sell this for to sell it quickly? Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm going to have to sell mine for 15, which means I'm going to offer five. Yeah. And that's just it. I make it. Sometimes I do, uh, I have the software that everybody can get for free in the land kit. And I built this thing. I just call it, I have a fancy, I need to put a logo on here. It's nothing fancy <laughs> here. But Well, it is called simple. Yes. Well, page one is your information, right? This is where you put your name, your company info, and all of your contact info. And the next page, you click here, is a property information here. And I'm just going to go through this real fast. We'll skip some of the, uh, the for the video, we'll, we'll go through this quick. But I'm going to go in here to PropWire and get the APN. I'm going to copy that, put it right there. The APN, I don't know what it stands for, but it's like the it's identifier. It's just the parcel number. Yeah. yeah. Seller's name, well, guess what? I can get that right here from PropWire. Clint, Clint. Hecker, Montana. Huh. Oh, that's out of state. Yeah. Seller name. Click, How many then, properties did he own? Um, six. six. Land, All in land, Florida. single family, mobile. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to copy his address right here, and I'm putting this in here because I'm going to create a letter right from here. Very cool. Copy and paste. Montana. Cut. Paste. I wonder where that is. Sydney, Montana. Never heard of that. The but. address of the property. Go here, property. I'm just gonna copy it. Again, I'm putting all this information. This is your. This is in your toolkit that you get yeah. for free. Yeah, love it. And I'm putting this in here because I'm going to be sending. I'm. I'm going to create a letter and a contract. Yeah. That I'm going to send to the um, to the seller, the county, Lee. So you're, how just, many acres? you're just literally copying and pasting. To fill out this information. Yeah. But what did we say it was? Uh, yeah, it was 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.25 acres. Yeah. Now, let's just say this is a realtor because I'm going to show you an email I send to the realtor. So let's say it's a Jim Realtor. Mm -hmm. And the MLS number is something. Let's blah, just blah, say blah. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next step. Now, this is where it helps. I built this so that it gives me offers three ways. Uh, offer based on active comps an offer based on sold mm. comps, mm -hmm. and I had it also where it offered based on the minimum wholesale profit. Okay. So if I want to make a minimum of $7,500, okay, so let me kind of walk through this real quick. Um, so if I, I want active comps in here, and I'm going to go back here to Redfin. First one is 17.925 acres, which, by the way, I have a VAs do this for me now, right? 0.25, and it calculates the price per acre right there. And you just pick the kind of basically the cheapest yeah. active right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So I'm looking at price low to high, mm -hmm. 22.9.25. Okay. 22.9.25, and let's do one. Let's do two more. 22.9.3. Oops. 22.9.3. And then the next one would be 23.25. 23 grand, 0.25. Now, I have the average price per acre of 82,000. Now, because it's active properties, I'm gonna discount the actives 
by 20%. Because people are going to offer lower than the asking right. price. Right, they're going to sell yeah. it for lower what, than what they're listing. And when I make my offers, I usually make offers at twenty-five cents on the dollar. So I just kind of these are all drop downs, you know. So I, I'm mm -hmm. going to discount the actives eighty percent, and then I'm going to offer twenty-five percent. So it tells me the value based on active comps sixteen five, which is close, right? Which means I'm going to offer forty-one mm -hmm. forty-four. Now let's look at sold comps real quick. So I'm going to change this to solds. Let's go six months. I, when I love seeing so many blues, Jerry, that just gets me excited. Oh, yeah. Because that means super oh, hot market. Yes. Yeah. All right. So 11.25, that's 0.23 acres. So I'll go back here. 11.250, 0.23 acres. 12.700, 0.25 Thirteen thousand. I do four. I yeah. Do four. Thirteen thousand point two five. And thirteen thousand five hundred point two five. Thirteen thousand five hundred point two five. Now, one of the, one of the things too is when you change this to table, you scroll down. There's a download all button, so you can download all of those if mm -hmm. you want. Just put them in a spreadsheet and you know just copy and paste. Or, so now I have an average price per acre based on sold comps of 51,000. And again, going back to my discount of 25 grand. So the value based on solds is mm -hmm. about, about 12,900 and the offer based on solds would be maybe 3,200. So now I'm on the third way I like to come up with an offer based on the minimum wholesale profit. And so now I have two different values. And this just tells me, all right, so what am I gonna list this thing for? And if I remember, I go back here to actives and I just think, all right, so to sell this quickly, let me go back to photos. I want to list it for 16 grand, mm -hmm. let's say, okay? So I'm just going to type 16 grand here. I want to make a minimum of $7,500 profit. If I hire a realtor, I'm going to pay them 10%. I'm going to have maybe 500 in closing costs because I have a title company there that will do it for 500. And miscellaneous, maybe if I'm doing pictures, a couple hundred. And I'm going to use my own money, but if you're using private money, I might pay you know, three hundred dollars in interest or something like that there. So now, based I have another offer of sixty-two hundred. So now you look at this. That came to six. That right. came to sixty-two. Right. So now, okay. right here is kind of my summary of everything. Um, I have. Let me zoom in a little bit. Sorry for y'all on YouTube with the small zoomed in here, but I have three different values. Based on active comps, sold comps, and list price, sixteen five seven seventy, twelve eight five seven. This is kind of where the it's kind of a mixture of art and science. I'm thinking, well, what should I do here? What should I offer? I've got three different offer numbers: forty one, forty four, thirty two, fourteen, and sixty two hundred. Well, remember up here, I almost always default to based on minimum profit because I'm thinking, man, if I if I sell it for sixteen grand, I'll make seventy five hundred net. So I could offer thirty two hundred, but I'm still going to offer. I don't know. Like I'm thinking, I might offer six grand. Yeah. For the deal. Or could you could you look at it and say, you know, maybe I'll offer three or four, but my max I could go up to would be six. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe exactly. think about that. And that way you got a little room to counter. Yeah. All right. So let's say. Uh, I'm, I'll, let's say I'll offer 45, 4,500 kind of, you're kind of now in the middle of those numbers. Yeah. So I might go into County records and see if there's any back taxes owed. Usually there's not. So I'll just leave it at zero and I'm going to give an offer expiration date of next Friday. All right. Now this is my secret sauce, honey pot. Like this is where you can make a lot of money now by doing offering also seller financing. So my cash offer that I decided to make was 4,500. What if I almost double that? So I could go here and I could say double that if I wanted. So what if I offer them 4,500 cash or $9,000 seller financing? Mm. And I do 10% down. Mm -hmm. Let's do 4% interest amortized over five years. Or you could amortize it over 10, whatever. Look <laughs> how right? cheap the payment is. 82 bucks. <laughs> Come on. Let's make it five, let's say. So $150. Now, this deal... So if I'm paying 149.17, let me just open up this other um, mortgage calculator I have here. 
and we'll see what the pay. I'm going to sell this thing for like, let's say I sell it because I'm selling an owner financing. I'm going to bump it up to maybe 20 grand. Yeah. A buyer puts down a thousand. So I'm financing 19,000 bucks and I'm going to finance it over 60 months, let's say. I'm going to charge 10% interest. So my monthly payment. Is going to be mm -hmm. four hundred and three dollars, right? That you're going to collect. I'm collecting four hundred and three. Would you collect four hundred and three dollars um, if you were paying one hundred and forty nine? So what's the? Was that three hundred cash flow? Four hundred three minus one forty nine. So I'm cash flowing two hundred and fifty four dollars on this deal with none of my own money. Now you might say, well, Joe, you're putting down nine hundred, but you but got a thousand. I'm collecting a thousand yeah. from my other buyer, right? Your your now your return is infinite. You have an infinite return, now. and and you're getting two hundred and fifty four dollars in monthly cash flow with no tenant headaches and hassles and toilets to repair and stuff like that. All right, so anyway, I love and offering you're, and you're giving the seller both options. Yeah, nine thousand seller finance or forty five hundred cash. Mm -hmm. Yep, All you right. decide what's better for you. Yeah, now I click submit, and what this tool does is it will email you three different things. A cash offer, a two option letter of intent, that's cash and seller financing, and an email you can send to realtors. So this is pretty cool. Um, you right here, you can download them. I'm gonna download them real quick and we'll open them up in Word. And the cool thing about my software, the way I built it is it gives it to you in Word so you can go in and edit it if you mm -hmm. want, all right? Mm -hmm. So um, here first is my cash offer. It's a letter with a contract. This is what I send like 90% of the time. Um, it's a cover letter, and if I had a letter reference ID, it would pull up here. My contact information is up here, the seller's information, right? Um, and this is where I tell them I'm going to make them a 4500 just a kind of a cover letter, and then instructions for returning the agreement. Most of the time, they just print this contract on page two here, sign it, take a picture of it with their phone, and text it back to me at this number. Hmm. Or you can email it to me or mail it to me here. And here's my one-page contract. Everybody can get this for free. It puts the, um, you know, all it fills in all the information, and there it is. Purchase price forty five hundred, payable in cash at closing. Um, closing will be within ninety days of agreement being accepted. Closing may be an extended an additional thirty days. Um, and then, this is the, the it, it expires June second. I'm telling them I'm agreeing, they're agreeing to let me resell it for a profit. Mm -hmm. um, Good, profit disclosure, mm -hmm. very important. And yep. I'm not um, a, an agent, I'm yep. not a realtor, not representing mm -hmm. them. And uh, the seller agrees that I can market the property. Perfect. Sometimes that's good enough for realtors. Sometimes yeah. they want more. Um, and then buyer retains the right to terminate this agreement by delivering to the seller a written notice of cancellation. That's there it. There you go. I don't have any earnest money in here. Maybe I could, I should. But I just have never done it. Yeah. I've never done it. And uh, there's no inspection clause or contingencies. With land, when you're buying land for $4,500, it, it just doesn't, doesn't matter, doesn't right? It doesn't really matter. Um, that's it. I don't sign it. Like, until what would you put for this money? $100? I mean, right? I mean, <laughs> it's just. It could be when you're dealing with realtors, though. Yeah. And the realtors writing up the contracts. Yeah, if, if realtors are writing the contracts because it's on market, they're going to have earnest money and probably proof of funds. Because that's just how agents are. Which is fine. So just I don't deal with it. That. Yeah. All right. So that's my cover letter. Okay. And a contract. And I just, that's what I send to the this seller. This is super cool. All right. Guys, you get this for free. This is really <laughs> awesome, Joe. Here is something I like to send. It's just a one page letter. Again, if I had a reference idea, it would go here. But it says, hey, I'm following up on our conversation about your quarter acre lot near city in county. If you're still interested in selling it, we might be interested in buying it. Here are some different options. Now, this is, again, in Word, so you could go in and edit and change any words you want. But this is kind of the way I position it. Maybe there's better ways, but I say, all right, cash, I'll buy it for $4,500. Close in one to three months, depending on clear title and due diligence. We pay all closing costs. We'll pay any realtor commissions if, mm. if you have a realtor. Seller financing, nine grand, 900 down, 4% five years, 149 a month for five years. We'll pay all the closing costs and property taxes. Our title company will handle all the paperwork. If you're interested, call me. If this doesn't work for you, please keep this letter for future reference. Hmm. So this is a simple just letter. Print it. Send it to the seller. I also will take this sometimes and copy it, paste it into an email, mm -hmm. and I'll send it to the seller. Perfect. Um, so then there's one other thing here I'll show you. This is my amazing offer 
email to realtors. I love doing this. So this is now, if the property is listed, um, it's in Word, so I can just copy and paste this and put it into an email. So, hey, Jim Realtor, I buy a lot of vacant land in the Lee County area. I might be interested in making an offer for your quarter acre listing at address MLS number. But before wasting your time, I want to see how negotiable the seller was on their price. If I can make a cash offer, I'm sure it would get rejected. Looking at recent sold comps and what I would need to make a profit, I would need to offer $4,500. Now, remember on this deal, they were asking what? Tw um, they were asking 20, no. Well, we don't know what they're asking because yeah, this was an off mark. I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. So if the realtor, this is going to be usually 25, 35% of what the list yeah. price was. So, hey, I know it's going to get rejected, but I can offer more if your client would accept payments over time with owner financing. They wouldn't consider that, would you? Would they? Here's what I could maybe offer with owner financing. And it just spells out the terms. I don't have an agent representing me right now, so if you can make this deal work, I'll make sure you get both sides of the commission in full up front. Mm -hmm. Thanks important. for your time. Hey, if this doesn't work out, do you know any other vacant lots? Perfect. I pay 10% commissions. Yeah. So like, I'm getting their greed glands going, right? Yeah. So now all I do is I just highlight the whole thing, I copy it, paste, bam, it, into send it, paste it into an email and send it. And which, by the way, we showed you this before, guys, but on listed properties, this wasn't listed, but right here, in PropWire, you it gives you, you gives you the realtor's email, and uh, when we skip trace too, we get a lot of emails back with yeah. the skip trace. Yeah, so it's a simple tool. It's a calculator I built that people can go in and put some information. Um, it gives you three different offers. Love it. You can choose the low. Sometimes I just choose the lowest one. If it's more competitive, like some of these areas in Florida are more competitive, I might you know, make a little higher offer than I normally would. Because you know you're going to move it fast yeah. and get top dollar. If it's an area that's not as competitive, I'll just go with the lowest offer yeah. every time. But my my story, my, my history has been one out of every 30 offers gets accepted. Man, you've made this so easy and convenient to just do this. And a VA could do this, right? A VA can do this. You could have your kids you could, do you this. You could literally just tell your VA, here's my numbers, and they go fill all this out and mm -hmm. send it. Now, what I do now is... When the voicemail comes in, my VA will listen to the voicemail, put all the information into my CRM, fill out that software, and then notify me when it's available. And then I go in and I'll review it real quick. Real quick and send it. And then just click a few buttons and send them yeah. the offer. So they prep it all and then you yeah. actually glance over it, make sure yeah. you're okay with it, send it. I'll even have the, the VA give me the, this, this link. See, if you click on this link right here, the VA will give me that link, and it, it includes all of my filters, it, and it, it puts, yes. gives me the same map that we see here. So all I do is click on that link. They do the work of getting it Redfin set up for me, you know? Because you do want to definitely spot your VA's work until they get really good yeah. and you're really comfortable with them because they'll make mistakes, and so it's good to kind of oversee that, give yeah. them feedback. But, yeah, this is great. That letter with the contract. Powerful. Send it every 30 days. Just keep on following up. I might change the date on there. That's so cool you're giving that for free in your toolkit. So Thank is, you. Is my toolkit better than his yet? Yeah. No. I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, man, it's fun. I, I geek out over this stuff. Yeah. Um, I encourage people too when you're when you're making offers, it's easy to get stuck in analysis paralysis. And so I I want to give you permission to make mistakes, right? Because you're gonna make <laughs> stupid offers which is fine. Sometimes you'll get your stupid offers accepted, which is good. <laughs> but if you offer too much, it's okay as well because you can always go back and renegotiate mm -hmm. with the seller. Once you get seller, once you get feedback from your buyers. Yeah. Well, this is fantastic, guys. I hope you really got a lot of value out of this. The biggest thing I loved, Joe, was how simple the analysis is. Yeah. Like you're literally just looking at what's going on, what's the, what are the actives, make sure I'm coming on market mm -hmm. under that. And here's three different ways to come to an offer. Here's a software that's going to put it all together in a nice cover letter and send it right out. Yeah. And really cool. Yeah. Uh, guys, please leave a comment and say, Joe, you're a flipping genius. Thank you for sharing these resources. Really cool. And, uh, and guys, we got, I think we want to do right for right now one more video yep. in this series. We'll add more to it, so stay tuned and, and be on the lookout. Remember, we're going to put the playlist link in the description. So if you want to watch this whole series, we recommend you do it in order. If you're not, that's going to really help you kind of build out the steps the right way. 
And what are we covering in the next video, Joe? How to sell your deals. Oh yeah, different ways to sell your deals. Very easy. Very, Very cool. Easy to do. Yep. So we're gonna we're gonna do that next, guys. Be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel, leave some comments, let us know how you're enjoying the series, and we'll see you on the next video.